in life, you only get one shot. You only get one shot. There are so many experiences where we only get one shot. And because our camera is now our most, our phone is now our most important camera, the ability to capture that magical moment comes and goes. HDR today, our cameras today, really needs to be improved. And let me illustrate that. So this is, um, this is B. This is one of our employees. And she's standing in front of a tinted window just to give her, give, make it even possible to take a picture of, um, uh, of her standing against a bright sunlight. She's stand, standing against a tinted window. And um, obviously, you, you look, she's perfect. She looks beautiful. And she's um, uh, uh, well taken. It's a nice camera. This is the iPhone 5. Um, however, you can't really tell what the outside is. It's completely washed out. It's washed out because the dynamic range of our camera, the iPhone 5, doesn't allow us to both capture her fidelity in the dark and the bloom outside, the, the extremely high, um, the bright sunlight outside. And so you could solve this problem by focusing on the outside. And this is what you get. Now you realize that you're in Las Vegas, but unfortunately, B has disappeared. And thankfully, there's a great new technology. This great new technology is called HDR. HDR works on most of the super phones today. They all have some kind of capabilities around HDR. And with an HDR shot, this is what you get. Quite frankly, it's a nice, cam it's a nice photograph. It's a nice photograph. She's very beautiful. She's standing in front of the palms, and, um, and everybody knows that she is enjoying a, a trip in Vegas. Now, she goes outside, and, um, and she's standing out in the middle of the sun. And as you can see, all of a sudden, everybody behind her is washed out. Still a very nice picture. The sky's gone. The building's gone. And, uh, and, and apparently, uh, some alien is walking uh, just, just behind her. And so, so uh, uh, the, the, her, her, um, <laughs> her, her boyfriend uh, says, uh, well, I, I have the technology for that. I have the technology for that. That technology, I'm a photo enthusiast. I know my stuff. I understand high dynamic range. I'm going to turn on HDR. Well, this is what you get on an iPhone 5. Well, the reason for that, the reason for that, now you see the background. Now you see the background. But because the camera took two shots, and because the, the, there's movement in the back, it's very difficult for the camera, the image processing technology software, to now realign and figure out what's the best way to put the picture back together. Today's camera works like this. It's a sensor, goes into an image signal processor, which takes the, what is called the Bayer patterns and turns it into RGB. In the process, it enhances the image quality, extracts the lumens, extracts the chroma, and reconstructs what looks like to you a JPEG image. That JPEG image is stored into system memory, after which the CPU can come back and do some wonderful magic with it, such as HDR. What NVIDIA's Tegra 4 architecture does is something radically different, something radically different. We introduced a brand new way of designing our chip so that we could put our processors closer to the imaging pipeline. The first thing that you see, and let me just go back. This is old. This is new. The first thing that you notice is that we take two shots at once. We take two shots at once. One shot with high exposure, one shot with light exposure. Then the first thing that we do is we dump it into this computational photography engine sitting in system memory. And once we do that, this engine could, allow, could now take advantage of all of the processors on our chip. That's why we have 72 cores. That's why we have four A15s. That's why we have this powerful ISP. And with this computational photography engine, we could do the necessary mathematics so quickly that effectively at the end of the shot, you have HDR. Let me illustrate. If you look at today, there's B standing in front of the palm, takes the first picture, goes through the sensor, goes through the ISP, goes into memory, changes the exposure. That's what the HDR software does. Changes the exposure, goes through 
the sensor, goes through the image pro ISP, goes into memory. Then the CPU fetches both of those images back out of system memory and does registration, does necessary warping, basically is taking two images, trying to align them pixel by pixel. Obviously very, very hard if your hand's shaking, if the, op if the subjects are moving. But nonetheless, it does its best possible job to register, to align, to warp everything so that it fits nicely together. And then it has to take this very, very large dynamic range effective photograph and re tone map it down into something that can fit within one photograph's dynamic range. Okay? All of that mathematics takes time. In the case of the iPhone 5, it takes about two seconds. It takes about two seconds. And that's why if you're standing perfectly still, you take a great photo. If you're moving around, it's a problem. Two seconds is a very long time. Well, the way that Tegra 4 does it is we go bam, bam. We take two shots, two simultaneous shots. And then all processors are deployed and running to do the alignment, the warping, the registration, the tone mapping, all of the necessary image processing, and boom, goes out one single photo. It basically is a one-shot HDR. As a result, whatever photograph you could take, whatever photograph you could take with a one-shot camera with one exposure, you could now take in HDR. Whatever you could take with one exposure, you can now take in HDR. And if you think about this architecture, imagine what, what else you could do with that. But before we do that, let's, um, let's, uh, let's demonstrate. Let's demonstrate what Tegra 4's magic camera can do. OK. Well, <clears throat> I understand that, that uh, we're in Vegas, but we decided to go to Tahiti. And I'm taking a vacation in Tahiti. And I've invited, I've invited a gamer. <laughs> I've invited a gamer. Um, I, I met a gamer at Tahiti. And I noticed that we have a lot in common. And her name is Holly. And, and Holly, I understand that you like to play video games. I do. I do. What are your favorite video games? Wow, Skyrim. I like everything Star Wars and Red Dead Redemption and blah, blah, blah. Anything RPG. <laughs> like all the gamers out in the audience are going, wow, gamers they know don't look like that. Well, anyways, Holly and, and I turn out, we hit it off. We have a lot in common. And so, so, uh, so um, why don't we invite invite someone to take some pictures of us. Okay. Okay, so, so um, Brian. Brian is the chief architect of our computational camera. Um, Brian Cabral, Hi. sir. How you doing, Jensen? Great to see you. I understand that you have, you have a, a camera you like to, now this is a prototype camera, it's a prototype tablet, and you would like to take some pictures of us. Yeah, we, yes, I sure will. Um, Hang on a second. Hang on a second. I want, I want this one to look good. Take it off, Jensen. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, make sure I'm make sure I'm make sure I'm standing good. Yeah. Am I right here? Yeah. Yeah. We can see it's all washed out. And um, let's let's just check out um, what we can what we can do with uh, some live HDR here. Yeah. And that's a lot of light being thrown out behind the... Uh, Let me see if I understand what you're doing. I could barely see it through the reflection of that glass. But you're, you're basically running um, HDR in live video yeah, right, right now. Right. Holy. All that computation that Jensen was talking wow, about. Wow, that's pretty Real amazing. Time. So you're running in live video, and, and, um, and you're doing HDR on, let's see, on the right side, right side of the audience, left, I guess. Left, left side. Left, which, left. Le, your left side. My okay. left side. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about their, right, their <laughs> left side. <laughs> so let's take a picture. Okay. Um. So real. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to look good. I'm gonna try, come here, Holly. Hang on a second. Come here. Let's get this one, this one we here. keep. <laughs> Are you good there? Yeah. All right, let's check, check it out. Thank you. Let's check that out. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's, Holly turned out good. Let's, let's check it out. Can you zoom in? Yeah, there you go. 
Could you focus it? Yeah, there you go. Wow. That's a keeper for your vacation. <laughs> wow. Okay, so, so let's, see, let's see what happened here. Basically, without HDR, the background is completely blown out. But with H, and, or we could, we could focus in on us, um, and, uh, or we could focus in on the background, but unless, uh, otherwise we would be, we would be underexposed. Um, but with this one-shot HDR, Brian was able to keep HDR running all the time, and he could do it while, it's, while video's running, um, and he could take a single shot. And um, uh, gosh, every, and was, every shot from now on is gonna be beautiful, and we can keep our memories forever. Yeah, it's instant, it's always on, that, you know, Far, far less than a second. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank All you, right, Brian. Arlen. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, Tegra 4, this new computational engine. Um, there's so much you could do. With this architecture, you saw the one-shot HDR today. You saw the HDR video. There's also HDR preview. It doesn't record it, munch on it for a while. Um, it's recording, it's previewing all in HDR. But one of the things that, that is really fantastic, you probably didn't pick it up. Because we're doing everything at the software and hardware la layer inside our chip, what comes out of the chip right off the bat is HDR. What that means is every software application today just works. No modification necessary. No porting necessary. You could either decide, I would like to have HDR on all the time, and then as a result, in that particular case, it was just a Google camera that came off of Android, pure Android, and it is fully HDR. The other thing that, that uh, we didn't have to do just now, and I don't, I don't know if he did, uh, was to turn on the flash. When you take two shots, how do you know when to flash? In the particular case that we had, we took one shot, then the flash works again. So you could use the flash in dark environments, turn on HDR all the time, works with every single application. The future of computational photography is quite exciting. This architecture is the first implementation for us, but you could just imagine Tegra N, Tegra N plus one, Tegra N plus two will, will continue to innovate around this area. Some of the things that I'm excited about in the area of computational photography is really to turn your camera into a device that can take pictures far beyond what DSLRs could do. Just as digital music players made it possible for you to enjoy music, not just in a digital way, but in a way that you couldn't enjoy with CDs, cameras will do the same thing. These cameras with these supercomputers, if you will, behind them will do amazing things. HDR panorama would be possible. Wouldn't it be great when my kids were taking their, their karate black belt tests and they were doing their final performance? I would have loved to take a strobe motion of them. When they threw up, when they jumped up in the air and did a triple somersault, it would be fantastic to see their flipping kicks and capture it in a strobe motion example. The high dynamic range is a picture that Spencer took uh, this summer. And, and of course, we could also do 3D reconstructions. You take multiple shots of, of an environment, reconstructs the 3D space, and as a result, you can look around. One of my favorites, the ability to continue tracking an object so that it stays in focus. Really, really hard to do that with a camera today. So if you're following your kids as they're playing soccer, the odds of being able to use a camera, a digital camera, to capture an action shot, impossible. But now, with computational photography, we could create technology that makes it possible for us to capture those magical moments. Computational photography a brand new area that Tegra 4 is going to be able to take us into. I'm super excited about it.